You know, Matthew says here, and when he, John the Baptist, saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, <laughs> he didn't have a very polite way of addressing them. Hi, I am Bishop Jerry Hayes, Abbot General of the Apostolic Disciples of the Way, and you are watching uh, episode number 29 of the Bible verse by verse. And we're going to pick up just where we left off in our last episode, but before we do, would you join me as we go to God in prayer? Most gracious Heavenly Father, you who sit upon the circle of the earth, we ask that you would illumine all in us that is darkness and anoint our minds and our lips and our hearts. In the name of Christ Jesus, amen and amen. Well, <clears throat> praise the Lord. So we're talking about uh, the uh, first book of Matthew. Now, if you will remember, uh, Matthew writes his, uh, his gospel in five books. And uh, each book consists of, it ends with a uh, discourse, or we might say a sermon or a teaching of Jesus, and contains several narratives. So we're in that first book. It's going to end with the Sermon on the Mount, and we're now dealing with the narratives of the first book of Matthew. And we're going to talk about the Pharisees and the Sadducees and one other uh, religious group that Matthew doesn't mention. In fact, nobody mentions in the Bible. And I think that that silence screams and is almost deafening to this teacher. <clears throat> but here the Bible says, but when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism. Now, this is the first time that these religious groups are mentioned in uh, the Bible, in the New Testament, in the Gospel of Matthew. So who are they? So I think it behooves us to say something about them. So uh, you, you know, you read in the uh, throughout the New Testament, and these two groups come up quite often. Now, uh, who were the Pharisees first? Well, this group was marked by a devotion to the law, both the written law and the oral law. The scribes, who were the lawyers of the day, were mostly of this group. They were very meticulous about the law of Moses. Now, from Matthew chapter 23 and verse 2, we know that they knew the uh, Old Testament scriptures inside and out. From Luke chapter 18 and verse 12, uh, we know that uh, they practiced tithing. Uh, even the smallest things they tithed when they would go out and collect spices from the countryside, they would tithe. It's like when you go out and collect your blackberries or, or your ginseng, uh, you, you would tithe on that if you were a Pharisee. And by the way, uh, Jesus said, unless our righteousness exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees, we don't have a hope of being saved. Now, Mark uh, chapter 12 and verse 40 informs us that they prayed a lot. They loved to pray. In fact, they loved to be seen praying. Now, now we should not uh, pray to be seen, but we should be seen praying. And then from Matthew chapter 23 and verse 15, we learn that they were, for the most part, hypocritical. Now, Luke tells us in Luke chapter 16 and verse 9 that they were self-righteous, and lastly, Matthew records that they were the most zealous at persecuting the Lord. So that's who the Pharisees were. Now, who were the Sadducees? Well, the Sadducees were the priestly aristocratic party that were centered in Jerusalem. The high priest were, was of the, the Sadducees. 
They accepted only the Torah. That's the first five books of the Bible. Uh, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. That's all they accepted as being uh, uh, canonical and as being inspired by God. They denied the bodily resurrection and the existence of angels. Acts chapter 23 and verse 8. They were opposed to the oral traditions observed by the Pharisees. Now, their main interest was the temple apparatus of worship and also collaborating with Rome. They opposed Christ as vigorously as did the Pharisees and were condemned by him as severely, but not as often. Uh, now, there's no wonder that uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees were addressed by Rome as old generation of vipers. You know, in, in Matthew chapter 16, verses 1 through 4 and verse 6, the Pharisees also with the Sadducees, the Bible says, I'm quoting this verse, came tempting, desired him, that's Jesus, that he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said unto them, he said to the, these two groups, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, when it is evening, you say it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be uh, foul weather uh, today, for the sky is red and lowering. Ho, ye hypocrites, Jesus said. Ye can discern the face of the sky, but ye cannot discern the signs of the times. A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, Jesus tells them. And there shall no sign be given it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And he left them and departed. Then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware. When Here in verse 6, Then Jesus said unto them, that's his apostles, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. So the Sadducees was that, they were that uh, temple a uh, group of priests. The, the high priests were of the Sadducees, as I've said. They didn't believe in angels. They didn't believe in spirits. They didn't believe in the resurrection of the dead. And uh, if you want to know an easy way to know the difference between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, you can just remember this. The Sadducees did not believe in the afterlife and the resurrection of the dead, so they were sad, you see. <clears throat> Paul said, if only in this life I had hope, I would be among all men most miserable. Amen. Now, there is a uh, third group of religious people in Judea and Jerusalem and and especially in the uh, Jordan wilderness, that is not mentioned here with the Pharisees and Sadducees. And I wonder why they aren't. Matter of fact, they're not mentioned in the Bible at all. Not a whisper, not one word about this group. And I'm speaking of none other than the Essenes. Now, the Essenes were a semi-monastic group of religious Jews, who had separated from the temple apparatus because they thought the temple under the Sadducees were, uh, was uh, polluted and had become an abomination and that God had left the temple. So these people withdrew themselves and lived in cloistered communities. Now, their biggest and most noted community was was in the Qumran community that has been made popular in modern times with by the Qumran caves and the various documents, ancient documents from the time of Christ and earlier that were found there in the mid-1950s by a shepherd boy. Now, uh, but the Essenes did not only live in a uh, uh, monastery in the Qumran uh, wilderness. They also 
occupied the towns and they had houses in the towns that were also also tied in to communal style of living. <clears throat> they who were these these uh, Essenes that the Bible does not even mention and why does the Bible not mention them? Well, we only know about them from classical sources. The oldest account of the Essenes that we have comes from Philo of Alexandria, 20 BC to 50 AD. Now, he tended to idolize the Essenes and accommodate their ideas and lives for his Greek readers. <clears throat> now, there are three major accounts of the Essenes in the historian Josephus. Josephus also pointed to the features in the Essenes that would appeal to the Greeks. He compared the Essenes to uh, Pythagoras, the Pharisees to the Stoics, and the Sadducees to the Epicureans. Now, again, when any uh, secular historian talks about the religious groups that were in and around Jerusalem, Judea, in the time of Christ and the apostles, they all mention the Essenes, but the New Testament writers do not mention them. And to me, this is a silence that just screams. And the question has to be asked, I think, why? The elder Pliny, a Latin writer who accompanied Titus in the war against the Jews, briefly mentions the Essenes in his natural history. Now, what do we know about their founding, about their establishment? Essene literature refers to a lawgiver who encouraged communal living. And perhaps this is the teacher of righteousness <coughs> himself that Essene literature references so much. Now, references to the Essenes begin in the Maccabean governorship of Jonathan in 160 to 143 BC. Now, individual Essenes are mentioned occasionally. Judas in the reign of Aristobulus, 104 to 103 BC. Uh, they predicted the day and the place of the death of Antagonus, a uh, Menahem Essene by the name of Menahem, greeted Herod as the future king when Herod was still yet a boy. So consequently then, Herod had a high regard for them. Another Essene named Simon interpreted a dream of Archelaus uh, in uh, AD 6. Now, their location is this. Pliny locates a community of Essenes on the shore of the Dead Sea, and, and surely that's the community that... Uh, uh, wrote and preserved the writings that we now have, uh, did just north of Injeti and Masada. But other Essenes, as, as I've already said, lived in towns and villages and had an open house policy for traveling Essenes. Now, there were apparently different orders of the sex. Josephus refers to the customs of one order of the Essenes. Now, uh, Essenes for the most part, were celibate and men, but they did have orders that had families and uh, encouraged marriage in order to uh, propagate uh, the race. Now, they had certain characteristics. Admission required a postulate to live outside the camp for a year with minimum provisions and follow the rules of discipline. Now, if he remained faithful, he could draw near to the purification water and this is another thing. They were real big on washings of water. Then after two more years as a novitiate, he could take the oath and join the common meal, which is another interesting thing. They, they taught and believed that uh, you uh, were received into their community through fellowshipping at a common meal. Remember the importance of the washing of water and the common meal. Now, I am asking why that uh, the writers of the New Testament, none of the apostles of their circuits, mention the Essenes. Now, the Essenes were ascetic. That means that they had a very 
restrictive lifestyle. Essenes held all things common. Uh, none of them had personal property. They all shared the wealth of the community. The Essene orders differed on, as I've said, on marriage and children. Uh, the Essenes did uh, virtuous deeds because this was their idea. Then their righteousness was incomparable. Because of their belief in the immorality of the soul, they engaged in virtue for the hope of reward and the fear of immortal punishment. Now, a good portion of their time was spent repeating a vow, which was said before eating as a constant reminder of their dogma. They vowed piety to God, justice to man, hatred of the wicked, and love for the just. They also promised to love the brethren, love truth, conceal nothing from one another, and reveal nothing to outsiders. Now, the Essenes observed strict religious orders. They functioned as scribes and prophets, studying and preserving the scriptures, the books of their sect. Uh, they worshiped in obedience to the law. There was daily instructions, uh, except on the Holy Sabbath. During instruction, they sat in order, one man reading, one elder explaining, usually by symbols and allegories. And they were in disagreement over the sacrificial system in Jerusalem, either because of the priesthood or the calendar. They followed the solar calendar of Jubilees instead of the lunar calendar. Uh, they sent offerings to the temple, but no sacrifice. They made the sacrifices to God among themselves since their customs of purification were different. Their purifications were strict. They washed in cold water for purity. But understanding and, and interestingly, I should say, oil to them was a defilement and uh, it necessitated washing. Hippolytus states that they believed in the resurrection of the body. Now, according to the classical writers then, the scenes were ascetic. They were semi monastic Jews who separated themselves from the pagan world to pursue a life of virtue, which they believed was not possible apart from this, from the seclusion of their fellowship. Being conscious of evil, they engaged in purification, instruction, communal meals instituted by the priest and their own sacrifices. And it was a hierarchical system based on love and obedience. Now, I probably will not be saying a lot about these scenes from here on in, but I must say this. It is interesting that John the Baptist came preaching out of the very vicinity that was the Essene stronghold. It's further interesting that the Essenes had separated from the temple because they felt that the temple apparatus had forsaken uh, truth. It is interesting that John is a priest, but he was in the Judean wilderness, in the, in the area of the Essenes, throughout his young adulthood, the Bible says, until his showing unto Israel, until he came preaching. Uh it's interesting that the Essenes' uh, infatuation with washing uh, and John came baptizing. It's interesting in the Essene receiving people into their community through a common meal and what later uh, Jesus instituted as the uh, Lord's Supper or the Eucharist. I want to ask this question, and then I'm going to leave it with you, beloved. Could it be, is it possible, that John the Baptist, even Jesus, and, and, and the apostles, and those early Christians, were in some way connected with the Essenes? Could that be the reason that we don't find them mentioned in the New Testament? 
the other religious orders are railed against by Jesus. John here calls them generation of vipers. <laughs> That's likely what an Essene would refer to the Sadducees and the Pharisees as. Jesus called them the synagogue of Satan. Uh, could it be then that Christianity with Jesus and John actually has some roots in the Essene community? Things that make us go, hmm. Let's pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now, beloved, it's my prayer that the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, that your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.